You ever install an app on Linux and hit a wall of choices, things like dev, flat pack, snap, app images, etc. Somehow it still isn't in your menu. And along with that, some of the applications only have one option for install, so you end up with a mix of installs. Howdy folks, Zach Perry here again with a video to talk about managing your applications in Linux. And today we're going to be doing this on the HL8. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. There we go. Today we'll be demystifying why there are so many formats and use a single GUI, bow, boa, bow. I tried looking it up, got something different each time, so apologies in advance for the pronunciation. And this is what we're going to use to manage them all in one place. And this was kind of my first roadblock when I got into Linux. I needed to learn about all these different install methods, keep track of them, search to see if some had updates available, and it was all kind of just a bit overwhelming. And today's app highlight aims to reduce all that app tracking, updating, etc. that is commonly done. Now, in this video, we're going to cover a few different things. First thing, what each pack method is and why it exists, the pros and cons of each, a quick tour of Bao Bo, <laughs> a unified app manager formerly known as fpacman, features from Bao's docs, so tray mode, time shift backups, web apps, and more, a short practical setup of your .deb apps that show alongside flat packs and snaps. In the first part, we're going to be talking about the formats, what and why. Now let's start with talking about some of the formats and why there are so many to begin with. Now, starting with system packages, these are specific to each Linux distro, so things like .dev for Debian slash Ubuntu via apt, RPM uh, for Fedora and OpenSUSE via DNF and Zipper, and they offer a tight OS integration, efficient shared libraries, predictable updates, has built-in package manager right in the GUI, uh, trade-offs, they can lag behind the upstream dependencies, conflicts can happen, so on and so forth. Flatpak or Flathub, um, Sandbox, it bundles its own dependencies, runs on any distro. Upside, you always have the newest versions, permission controls are usually shown in the distro package manager or in the Flathub app store. Downside, bigger disk format, uh, or footprint I should say, for those libraries and runtimes. Then Snap, so Canonicals, Universal Format, Sandboxed, and Auto Updates, similar to Flatpak. And it has a lot of commercial apps and it auto updates for some, that's going to be a downside, but also shown in the distro's package manager in the GUI. Downside is that it can start slow, it can make some apps a little slower to start, and it is canonical centric. And then finally, we have App Image. So, upsides of this, it is a single file you download, has all the libraries it needs. You do a chmod plus x, run, no install uh, required. Ultra portable, you can have versions side by side. So, if you need to compare two versions or one that uses something a little bit older that's needed, one that has a little bit newer, you can run them both there. And if you want to remove it, you just remove the app image since there's no extra dependencies. Downsides of it, of course, no auto updates. Could be a plus for some. Um, no integration unless you add some sort of helpers. And the last three, they sound pretty similar to one another and operate, uh, but here's a reference that I like to use. So app image, download, run, delete, when done. Good if you need something lightweight and portable, flat pack, install once, update when you want via flat hub. Good for desktop apps, user control, and for people who want a community ecosystem. Snaps, install once, auto updates via canonical. Good if you like hands-off auto updates in a Debian environment. Now, why are there so many? Different distros, they're gonna optimize for stability versus newness. Developers want one build that works everywhere. Users want choice. The result is power and fragmentation. Now, to bring that all together, we have Bow. Bow. It is a cross-platform GUI to search, install, uninstall, upgrade, downgrade, launch apps from multiple ecosystems. So everything I mentioned, app image, devs, Arch, AUR, flat packs, even web apps. It has tray mode, so it runs in system tray and notifies you on updates. Time shift integration, so it can snapshot your changes. Optional, but awesome to have for a safety net in case something goes haywire. So let's actually install um, Bow right now. So this comes from GitHub user Vint If More. I hope I pronounced that properly. Um, so goes through, we have a few different ways to install here. We have our app image, which is by far the easiest way. Then we also have the .deb version. So we are going to do our .deb version here. So this is gonna be for Ubuntu 20 based distros. We're actually doing Ubuntu 22. So we're gonna have some issues that uh, pop up, but we're gonna see that here. 
So we're gonna run our dependencies here in our terminal that we have side by side. And we're gonna go through here. There we go, installing everything. And there's some optional dependencies as well for timeship backup, uh, flat pack integration, snap D, and a few other things there. So once we have that, we're actually going to do use pip3 and we're going to install bow. And let's go through and we can see our first roadblock here. So with Ubuntu 22, um, there was an issue there where you have to use Python 3 da, uh, dash VNV, uh, virtual environment, essentially VN, V-E-N-V, my goodness. Did not have enough coffee this morning. Another. But let's actually go through now and we are going to get that set up properly. And let's see here. All right, so we have that going through right now. Go, and we're gonna hit another roadblock here just in a moment. And it's going through, it's installing bow. Oh, but it, it's not in our path environment. So we're gonna put it in our path real quick. And let's actually have this just copy and paste it off to the side here. So you don't have to see me make a whole bunch of mistypes. So let's see. And then we're just going to echo or export our path into dot local slash bin. And then we should be good to go there. So now when we actually do boot up bow, it'll ask us for a password here. And then it will start searching through everything, looking for uh, system packages to synchronize, uh, snap packages, dead, whatever's available on the, on the system itself. So as we can see here, we have good list of things. So these are all things that are just available for updates. Kind of the same thing you're going to see in your regular package manager. Now we have a few extra things to do here. We are on Ubuntu, we're on a Debian based system. So we're going to want .dev apps to appear in bow. So to do that, we're going to do sudo apt update and and sudo apt install aptitude. And then in bow settings and types, we're going to enable Debian. And so standalone .dev app Deb app installs, um, like some vendor downloads. So they may show up, but they won't auto update unless the vendor provides an app repo. Um, so this kind of leads into our next section here, which is flat packet snap. So we'll go into that now. Same thing. If you need to enable those, you go into the settings in bow and you would enable both of those. So do that now. There we go. And with snaps, it supports refresh and changing the specific channel that you want to uh, um, grab your installs from. So stable, beta, etc., cetera, uh, from the apps action menu. And then when it comes to app images, so Val, it's gonna pull from app image hub and you can also install app image files manually, which is great, which is what I usually do. Heads up, so app image installer, it's sometimes gonna clash with, um, during the installs, if you have any sort of crashes, you can just temporarily remove it and try again. Um, that being the app image, not that itself. Uh, so installed files, they're gonna live under .local, share, bow, app image, installed. And with desktop entries, those are gonna be added for you, which is just such a big time saver for me. That was one of the things, it's like, I need to have it all readily available. I need to have it here, ready to go. And having that done automatically for you is, um, is definitely a good quality of life thing to have. And then web apps, to be honest, I haven't tried this too much, but it's very, very interesting. So it's gonna turn websites into desktop apps. Um, it's using Electron under the hood, and it's gonna download, isolate the needed tool chain automatically. So there's no global um, node or Electron required and supports DRM Electron um, when needed. So settings, same thing. You're gonna to go to settings. You're just gonna to go to settings if you want to enable something, basically is what I'm trying to say here. And then, so some quick quality of life and safety things. So tray mode, um, you can start bow tray on log on for, um, or log in for silent um, update checks, time shift integration. So enabling backups uh, before you do an install upgrade downgrade, which is fantastic um, and performance tips. So if you need to, find things a little bit sluggish, a little bit slow um, for any reason. I haven't run into anything personally, but you can disable backends that you aren't going to be using. So 
um, if you aren't using .deb, if you aren't using Snaps or Flatpak or anything, um, uncheck those and um, it won't have to do as much uh, searching through the system, things like that. Um, and another thing that you can do is raise the cache's expiration date and turn off icon downloads um, if you need to snap your startup, if you find it being a little bit sluggish or anything. Linux packaging it isn't one thing, it's a toolbox. And like any real toolbox, if you don't have some kind of organization, things can get messy and cluttered. It's meant to handle .deb, RPM for native integrated stability, Flatpak snap for universal sandboxed apps with painless updates, app image for portability, and web for wrapping your daily sites into desktop style apps. And bow, bow <laughs> sits on top, giving you one clean panel to search, install, update, downgrade, launch, and even snapshot time shift before you pull the trigger. So what do you think about bow? Do you, do you personally use it? Do you have something else that you use? Drop everything in the comments down below, hit that like button, subscribe, check out everything we have on offer at store.45homelab.com, head on over to our forums at the same site, and our socials are listed down below. I'm Zach Perry, see you in the next one. Bo, boa, bow, 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 bow. <laughs>